Hello everybody, meteorologist Jacob Campbell for a, whoops, a severe weather update video um, for Monday. This is covering the severe weather that's starting today, which has already actually been triggered um, through a lot of this area. Um, there are some severe thunderstorm warnings right now in uh, northern Oklahoma, uh, sorry, not northern Oklahoma, in um, western Texas at, near the Amarillo area. Um, and there is, for the first time since 2017, a high risk for severe storms for the Oklahoma City all the way down to just north of the San Angelo area. Um, this is a monster storm that's going to be uh, starting up. So as of yesterday, first off, I want to say that on um, Saturday, the Storm Prediction Center already had a moderate risk for severe storms through the Oklahoma, Texas area, and um, they have since upgraded this to a high risk. And so the 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 area of essentially confusion was if a um, squall line would set up or if it won't. But so if a squall line did set up, the risk would be lowered. But there is still a squall line that's going to be setting up, but it's going to be setting up here. Um, in eastern Oklahoma and away from that moderate, or sorry, that high risk area. And so, if the squall line set up here in Texas and began moving to the east, then this would have probably been an enhanced or a moderate risk as opposed to a high risk. Um, I'll kind of go into detail on that a little bit later. But I do want to say that if you live in these areas, Oklahoma City, Atlas, uh, Norman, Oklahoma, uh, more Oklahoma if you live in um, uh, some of these larger cities here through Texas that are not in the map. If you are in these areas, take every warning seriously because this is a, a poten potentially dangerous situation. And on that note, oh, and I do before I get into that, I want to say there is a 45% chance of a tornado occurring within a 10 mile radius of any given point within this high risk mark. As you go out into the moderate risk, it goes down to a 30, then it goes down to a 15, then it goes down to a, a five and then a two. But if you live in these areas, the tornado risk is, is at a high risk today. Um, and the storm prediction center does not take this stuff lightly because the last time in, with it since 2010 there have only ever been 21 high risk days and today is the 22nd high risk day so the, the storm prediction center does not uh issue these high risks for nothing and i'm trying to get this video out before a lot of the stuff starts that way i can give you know at least a little bit of warning time fortunately a lot of the schools within oklahoma have canceled today due to the severe weather threat which is very good on them um Moving into this, uh, my transition didn't play. Oh, well. Moving into this, this is uh, a rough area. There are some counties in here that aren't um, actually in it that I've put in it. But according to the um, Storm Prediction Center, this whole area, most of this area, I should say, is in a uh, PDS tornado watch, which PDS stands for Potentially Dangerous Situation. So... PDS tornado watches essentially mean that the atmospheric conditions are right to produce very large, very long-lived, and very destructive tornadoes. So if you live in these areas, um, take every warning seriously and start making your emergency plans right now. And if you uh, live in Oklahoma, I'm almost certain that they're going to extend this PDS tornado watch into uh, the Oklahoma City metro and west due to the fact that the atmosphere is so ripe for this to happen today. Um, they don't have it, uh, for Oklahoma yet because Oklahoma is currently, um, not in risk for storms until I think about, uh, four or 5 PM central daylight time. So once those supercells, which will begin to pop up here in, uh, the, the, uh, Eastern Texas air or not Eastern is really Western, but this Eastern, uh, kind of South of the Oklahoma panhandle area, whatever you would call this. Um, they will start to pop up here and they will move to the east until they cross into Oklahoma, which is when Oklahoma will get their uh, severe storms. So I want to get off of that. And uh, of course, um, here we are. So 
Uh, here, once again, is the uh, Storm Prediction Center risk. There's also a risk for severe storms up here in the New England area, but I'm focused down here. If we move to the categorical and we move to tornado, the tornado threat, like I said, 45% chance within this area uh, right in here, spanning from that eastern um, Texas below the Panhandle area all the way into central Oklahoma. And that those hashed lines, those indicate significant severe, which means that there is a 10% or greater probability of a significant tornado, which a significant tornado is an EF2 through an EF5 tornado within um, 25 miles of, a, of a, any given point in here. So usually it's within, um, uh, oh, no, 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 it's usually within 25 miles. This significant severe for tornadoes, sorry about that, is for significant tornadoes within 25 miles of any given point. Thanks, Rich Man. I'm going to exit out of that. Um, and uh, there's a 30% throughout that entire um, moderate risk for severe storms and then, or for most of it, and then a 15% for uh, the rest of the moderate going into the enhanced, a 10% for uh, the rest of the enhanced, 5% for the slight, and 2% for the marginal. Moving on to wind, another big threat. And so if you uh, look in this significant severe area again, it's a 10% or greater probability of wind gusts of 65 knots um, or greater within a 25 mile of any given point. And that's within this 45% chance of uh, potentially strong winds. And then there's another 30% chance surrounding that. And moving on to hail again, um, it will load unless it's the same map. Oh, here we go. It did load. There we go. So, oh, hello. 45% chance of, uh, of damaging hail hatched area that significant severe means that there's a 10% or greater probability of two inch diameter hail within a 25 miles of any given point within that. Then there's a, a 30% outside of that, then a 10, a 15% and then a 5%. So it really drops off as you get away from that kind of, you know, um, really tight and compact area. Moving on to the HRRR model of um, the uh, simulated radar. So if you take a look, there's a system in Kansas right now that's pushing off to the north and to the east because the jet stream winds are pushing very far to the north, so it's a really north-northeast direction. But as we get into the day, you start to see those... Um, Sorry about that. You start to see these uh, little supercells down here pop up, and these will begin to grow uh, as we progress into the day uh, throughout today. And then they will start to set up here in Oklahoma and really begin to push to the west. And there's that squall line that we start to see, but that really starts to build as it gets into central and western Oklahoma outside of that high risk area. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen there. I uh, do want to move on to um, the 500 uh, millibar or hectopascal, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they're equal. But the 500 millibar winds, we do see, and this is at um, 18Z, which is at about, um, so 0Z is about 7 p.m. So this is about, uh, if my math is correct, 2 or 3 p.m. today, uh, which will actually go a little bit further in. So that's about 7 p.m. Central, Central Time. We see that we've got a very strong jet stream here um, with uh, wind speeds up to uh, 80 knots in certain areas. And then another little thing that I want to point out here um, If you take a look, so right in here, oh God, that was way too big. If you look right in here, specifically in these areas here, you see these uh, these isobars start to tighten, which means that you've got convergence aloft, which typically means that you're not really going to have storms down below. But when you look at the outflow bands out here in Oklahoma, those isobars start to diverge they start to move away from each other which means that when there's divergence aloft that means that there's convergence at the surface because it the wind converges at the surface and then raises through the atmosphere and then it diverges the winds separate and so that means that you have um, a stronger likelihood of severe storms within that area now if we take a look at the 300 hectopascal or millibar 
uh, winds, you see the same thing. The uh, They start to diverge as you get away from um, those thunderstorm areas down near the surface because those uh, winds aloft have begun to separate. And so areas within um, Oklahoma and Texas once again have that to worry about, not to mention the fact that there are wind speeds in the area of 114 to 120 knots moving in, which is also going to help tilt the jet stream and produce long-lived severe thunderstorms, which is what we're going to end up seeing. Now, moving on to, um, this is the uh, NAM model, and we're looking at um, 180 millibar uh, cape and shear, and this is uh around um, 5 p.m. tonight uh, central time for you know the Texas Oklahoma area this mixed level cape is at 5,281 joules per kilogram which means that the area within here is very prime for supercell development and for long-lived uh, convective cells as we push in you do see it start to diminish as you get into the nighttime hours as it usually does but once those storms have been triggered they're just going to continue moving along and you don't need a whole lot to really uh, you know beef up those storms as they move to the east uh, taking a look here at the significant tornado parameter, we really see this uh, significant tornado parameter start to uh, max out uh, at 10. Or no, this is 15. And so if we click on this and we take a look at a, a sample sounding of the area, we do get that tornado, uh, that tornado hazard type down here, which I don't usually look at that, but I am going to here because it is relevant now that we are the day of. Um, and then we see that there is a very large amount of cape in here. The area between this dotted yellow and this solid red is how you measure cape. And so if the solid red is on the other side, that's convective inhibition, which means that you're not going to get um, thunder, so, you know, severe thunderstorm development. But we do have that dotted yellow to the right-hand side of the, the solid red, which means that we have a lot of cape, and it's showing cape at the surface at uh, 3,937 that's just that's below the lifted cloud level and then we see cape um, at, in the mixed level at 3,699 joules per kilogram so that's taking into account um, I'm pretty sure it takes into account everywhere from zero to about uh, zero kilometers to about three kilometers um, and so there's a lot of cape in the atmosphere and then if we take a look at the photograph we see very strong shear we see um the this is like an example of if uh, a weather balloon was lifted into the air how it changes direction with height we see very strong winds uh lifting from i believe this is one to three kilometers and then it starts to twist and turn and the reason why it does that is because there's directional shear and you can also see the directional shear right here with the wind barbs so you get um near the surface you get some lighter winds but then as you increase and they're to the north as you increase the winds begin to twist to the west which means that there is um, directional shear there is that capability for um, uh, uh, rotating updrafts which is what that's showing so moving on to the supercell com uh, comp uh, supercell composite sorry uh, we get uh, this area in this Texas, Oklahoma area, once again, around 5 PM starting to max out at about, um, I saw 14 in here somewhere. I thought, well, regardless, you will start to see those supercells pop up really around that, um, three to 5 PM area for the Texas, Oklahoma, uh, area. I know I'm saying area a lot. I'm trying not to do that, but if we take a look at this IR soundings and we already see a supercell starting to pop up right here, those really, uh, really bright clouds mean that the cloud tops are very high. Uh, this is visible light. So the satellites looking down at it and it's reflecting light back up to it. Um, and so the higher those, those bases, the, the, more likely you have sorry the higher the tops the more likely you have overshooting tops and so if we take a look at this you can see all of these cumulus clouds starting to build up and and uh supercells are formed from cumulus clouds they form into cumulonimbi or cumulonimbuses i don't know what the plural of that is but as we move in you can see that there are also some areas where you can see the ground from the from the satellites and if that is happening that means that you have um surface heating going on which is only going to enhance these supercells as they begin to develop um, and so you can see that that 
cloud down here just kind of explodes, and that's what supercells do. They just kind of explode once you get in. I'm going to move my um, epic pen over here. We're going to go back to this, um, and we're going to click on, we're going to go with red here. So you can see the boundaries here. There's a warm front up here. Um, doing my best at drawing a warm front whatever you get the idea there's a warm front up there and then we're gonna go to our orange and there's a dry line down here and so the greatest risk for severe storms is where this dry line and this warm front meet if there was a cold front extending out uh, to the west here this would be called the triple point but there's not and so but what you're seeing is this is what is classically known as a warm sector but we could call this a moist sector instead of a warm sector since there's a dry line right here this is going to be the area where we see most of our tornadoes um if you live within this area as this dry line approaches the atmosphere is going to become increasingly unstable and uh you'll see more supercells pop up like that guy down there and they will continue to move to the northeast as this um, as this uh, warm front moves to the north and this dry line pushes to the east. Um, and so if you live in that area, this is just the sweet spot for those uh, severe storm development and for tornadoes and whatnot. And these will be affecting you for a lot of the, er, or the mid to late afternoon and early evening hours as they push to the west. So these are not storms to take lightly. As I said before, a PDS tornado watch has already been issued for really this portion, uh, not that, not nearly that big, sorry, for about that portion of Texas. If you live in there, take all precautions necessary these tornadoes could be very large and then there's another uh there, there's likely going to be a pds tornado watch issued at least for this part of oklahoma um ooh, not really great with drawing on this yet um the storm prediction center has not issued a pds tornado watch for that portion of oklahoma however like i said it was it's likely that they will just because of the high threat for tornadoes within that area. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. Please stay safe tonight for all people being affected by these storms. And I hope that the rest of you outside of this area are having a fantastic Monday. Thank you all. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a great day. Oops, forgot to click on that.